We have David Bonson, the Bonson Group Managing Partner, Nancy Tengler, CEO and CIO of Laffer Tengler Investments. Uh, Nancy Tengler, I will begin with you. What's going on here? Is this a perfect storm? Is this, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire? It's warning us about the stock market, no matter what today's gyrations? The economy still looks to be uh, pretty robust. We've been talking about slowing growth. We've been talking about the Fed raising rates. We, um, I, I'm surprised the market is, was at all surprised by this. So I think there's a lot more going on. Lofty valuations, a lot of uh, speculation. Otherwise, I think this is an opportunity to step in and pick away at the really high quality names, the dividend growers, the companies that you want to own for the next three to five years or the next decade. And that's, in fact, what we've been doing. We've been putting money to work. Well, that's good. But David Bonson, you have an interest rate threat. You have an ongoing inflation problem. It probably will not end well, but I don't know what the hell the timing is. And then you have this weird Ukraine story uh, with more Biden bungling. Now, the good news is the big tax and spend bill, I think, is dead. But what about all the rest of this? These nicks and knacks. And is this a perfect <laughs> storm for the stock market? It's like a big garbage pail of stuff that's developing. What's your take on it? Okay, well, there's a lot to chew on there. Uh, interest <laughs> rates going up is not bad for the market when it's not unexpected. Seven out of the last seven times that we've had an interest rate increase cycle, the market was higher six months later. What Nancy just said was exactly right almost through every single point she made. The dividend growers are doing just fine. Energy's doing pretty well. The defensives that have been underperforming, consumer staples, utilities, they're up on the year. What is going on is froth is getting wiped out because that's what's supposed to happen. It was too speculative. It was too excessive. Valuations were too high. So a lot of those hot tech names have gotten decimated. Uh, you got your crypto stuff that went down 50%. You have those types of things that had to kind of have this moment happen. They're supposed to happen more frequently. I don't think it's headline driven. I certainly don't think it's Ukraine driven. Fundamentally, what we have is a market that had excesses. They'll get purged out, but there's some quality in there as well. It's just actually, Larry, a great environment for active managers because you have to kind of pick your spots right now. Um, what happens to multiples and what happens to the overall market? I don't want to be overly pessimistic, let me just say. I just want to be honest with people, with viewers and listeners who are trying to figure this thing out because you've had a lousy year. So far, it's been a lousy year. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> I think it's written all over my face. Um, yeah, it has been, but we've had three extraordinary years uh, ahead of this. So I think to answer your question, Larry, multiples get con con contracted and we've already seen it. You know, our friend Ed Yardeni points out, if you take out the top eight, the magnificent eight, as he calls them, they have a market multiple, well, pre the last couple of days of 34 times. And the actual remainder of the S&P, the other 492 stocks had a, a multiple about 18. Mm. We think it's now closer to 16. So if you can do, as David has described and as we try to do in our portfolios, if you can go in and find the companies that have pricing power, um, the ability to kick off free cash flow, so strong free cash flow yields that can raise their dividends and buy back shares if they so desire, then those are going to be the companies that I think will sustain you. We won't see, I imagine, another 28% year in the stock market, but we could see with 8% earnings growth, a, a 5 to 8 to 10% year, uh, that, that still is a hedge against inflation. And we are worried about inflation. We have been. David Bonson, you actually don't believe the inflation story. I'm going to give you the last word here. I think for the ordinary person that's in, you know, ETFs and indexes and whatnot, Whenever the smart, smart, smart money comes on and says you can make, you know, good money, it's a stock picker's market. I don't know. Don't people get a little nervous about that? Honestly, David Bonson, <laughs> yeah, a little, just a little nervous. Stock picking. Oh, here I, we go again. I, yeah, I hope they do get nervous because I don't mean that people should be there trying to pick their stocks. I mean that I should be picking their stocks <laughs> or Nancy should be picking their stocks. And Abs so <laughs> absolutely for just a small premium. <laughs> yeah, but but but. In in all, in all seriousness, Larry, the, um, 
The issue with the Fed is not something that I worry about because of inflation. It's because of the misallocation of capital. Mm. I think it yeah. distorts capital. It's put housing prices in a totally unaffordable place. It promotes speculation and yeah. exacerbates boom bust cycles. Well, we don't like that. But I don't I do think that when you say it hasn't been a good year, I'll be honest, we were up coming into today on the year, not because we're doing something great, but energy's been doing fine. We're overweight energy. Right. Consumer staples have been doing fine. It's picking spots right now. It Listen, really is. I